Hello and welcome to Schmitty's Guide to Blade DPS in Secret World Legends. This guide is made for players who plan on using Blade as their primary weapon, and then we'll be going over a short build and rotation for each other weapon in the secondary slot. Uh, I apologize in advance, but for Blade, we sort of have to talk about the... the position this weapon is in right now. Uh, so Blade has by far the most difficult mechanic the most micromanagey and attention-intensive melee mechanic in the game. Usually for most of the other melee weapons, they've made the abilities really easy, the passive special abilities. So that way, you don't have to think about it too much. It'll make it easier for you to deal with the fact that melee is harder, because you have to position yourself a lot more often and pay attention to a lot more things. Blade does not uh, give us this leisure. On top of that, it tends to do about the same damage as other DPS specialties, but it burns an ability slot to do so, and you have to use this ability slot to do anything that even resembles damage in Blade. So there's that. I have seen one really strong Blade DPS uh, setup, and it is so specialized that I can't use it here, because I'm using this gear to make all nine of my DPS builds. So, with that out of the way, just you need to know that. Blade is tough right now. Let's get going. So, we have uh, the Razor's Edge. I think Razor's Edge is really strong. Just a really great overall blade for no matter what you're doing. Whenever you critically hit, you gain, or you have a 50% chance to gain Chi. Then we'll just use the Auction House to see the other ones. Stormbringer is super good. Uh, for bursty fights, when you enter combat, you gain 3 Chi. So you're almost all the way to a Spirit Blade right off the bat. Super strong, and you can keep your chi as you see here. So if we were to start fight right now with a spirit or with a stormbringer, it would just immediately give us five chi. We could immediately make a spirit blade. Super powerful for burst fights. Uh, it tends to fall off to razor's edge eventually because of the critical hits being better than one chi every ten seconds, but still very strong. Then this is sort of an honorable mention, but I like the shattered hellblade. It's just cool. You can't use your Chi to uh, reforge an active Spirit Blade, but instead, when your Spirit Blade breaks, you deal significant extra damage for each Chi. So you could do up to five times that damage that's listed right there with uh, just beginning E5 gear. If you were to do that, I would expect to see uh, Dancing Blade with Soul Forged, which we're doing here, because it makes a blade that only takes three attacks to break, unlike the standard one, which takes ten attacks to break. And I would also expect to see Warrior Spirit to do even extra damage when you break your blade, as well as give you some extra chi. So, you might see something like that. Just sort of an honorable mention. I think it's really cool. And then finally, we have the best blade in the game, which is the Blade of the Seventh Sun. Uh, makes it so that your Spirit Blade damage is increased phenomenally. However, you deal damage to yourself in exchange. Usually on these builds, what I have seen is people using Supreme Harmony with the head signet that decreases the cooldown of your blade elite ability. As you can see, it negates the extra damage you do to yourself, makes you do 23% more blade damage, gives you two chi, and with a short cooldown from that signet as well as Master's Focus, you have great uptime on this effect. Super strong, very powerful, very specialized. So if you were looking to do great damage with Blade, I would probably go down that route right now. But, since we are at a more general build, we're not going to have access to that. As such, normally I would want to see about 10 times our item power in damage. I'm going to be happy if we can get 4,000 DPS out of, any, out of most of these. So, let's just uh, get into it and start looking at the builds. So our standard core build for Blade is going to be Flowing Strike as our basic, Spirit Blade, uh, either Tsunami or uh, Swallow Cut, depending upon the energy requirements of that specific build, and then Dancing Blade. And our core passives are going to be Storm Surge or Hardened Blade if we are running Swallow Cut. And then we'll always be using Masterpiece for the extra Spirit Blade damage, as well as Soul Forged Blade for most more uh, Spirit Blade time. For Hammer in particular, we run Demolish and Seethe. I love Outrage, and then you either want to use Obliterate if you're using something like Pneumatic Maul, which sort of requires you to use more than one Hammer attack in a row, or 
If you are not using that, anger management is super good for hammer as a secondary because you will not be using a hammer attack more often than once every 5 seconds or so, which means that you will be gaining extra rage, which will translate into extra damage as you hit for more enraged demolishes. So I'm just going to do a short minute-ish long rotation for each one of these, and we'll see how we do. So for hammer, I like to start off with demolish, seethe, demolish, and then we're going to just go straight into dancing blade here, and then start our rotation. And then, oh, we need to use hammer. So really, the beginning part of this is going to pay, be paying a lot of attention to making sure we don't get too much energy. And then after that, we are mostly just paying attention to our spirit blade. We really want to make sure that we have that up as often as possible, because it's going to be what allows us to do good damage. So there we go, that's about a minute. And let's see how we did. Come on. Okay, so here we did about... Shoot, that's not great. We can do a lot better. Let's see if we can do a lot better real quick. So I think we made a couple of small micromanagement mistakes on our blade here, which hurt. We're just going to get to one more Dancing Blade, I think. And call it a parse. Okay, when we don't screw up... It is... There we go, okay, 4400 DPS. That's what we were expecting. Let's Let's carry on here real quick. Man, this does not bode well. Because I'm good at that one. Alright, now we're going to be doing Blade and Fist. I like to start off with Maul. We have enough Chi or Spirit Blade that we can just immediately go straight into uh, a Dancing Blade without burning all of our energy, so we're going to do that. And as you can see, my fists passively regenerate some of our uh, fury here, so that makes it so that that's a little bit easier to gain than we would otherwise have. It would take you a little bit longer otherwise, which might make it so savagery is a little bit better. Oh yeah, I have like a build that I need to show you about this, so we'll do that in a second. See how we did there. 3700. Not great. Uh, I'm not great with Fist, and also it's just like Fist as a secondary is nowhere near the power that Fist uh, as a primary is because you have all these cool interactions with the afflicts that you can't really get here. So let's run to the next one, which is going to be um, Blade Blood. In this one, Blood is. 
not a great secondary weapon. So if you have Blade and Blood, I would suggest switching Blood for Blade and using it that way because that will do lots more damage. But we'll show you what we can do here. So again, I'm going to start with Maleficium just so that we can get our other skill going here. And try to get a little bit of corruption going because that's the only way we're about to get corruption. And we're going to try to use basics when we actually build up, because that'll help us out. And then try to use Maleficium after you've used your um, Desecrate so that you do more damage. And we are still making silly mistakes. Yeah, so, yeah, it's just not a good secondary weapon. I would not use it. I would use Blood Blade all day long before I used that. But there you go. If you have to, if you must, that's about as good as I could get to make it so that it'll work. Uh, then we have Blood Chaos. Again, not great because um, this is another setup weapon where you have to set up like corruption for blood. You have to set up your paradoxes here. We just don't have enough to be able to do that. So... Um, the build that I am running is going to be Reality Fracture with Rend Space and Breakdown. We're just running Resonance Cascade, so if we do get Enigmas, they immediately get thrown on to our, uh, our group instead of getting buffing the enemies. So I like to start off with Rend Space, or with Reality Fracture. We'll just immediately throw that into our Spirit Blade so that I can use a big ability and then we're going to break our spirit blade there but that's okay use our basic to try to build back up for as much as we can because our basic loses more or stops us from losing more extra potential damage We'll use one more of our dancing blades and call it a parse. And we did okay there, actually. 4198 is pretty solid. And let's run on to the next build here, which is going to be Blood or Blade Ellie. I've, I. Oh, we have to wait for our cooldowns. I have found that for some reason Blade Ellie seems to flow a lot better than a lot of the other Blade abilities. So we're going to be running Crystallized Flame, which doesn't do great damage, right? 450 every two and a half seconds. But for some reason, when I think the first time that I saw this, my jaw just dropped. I just stared at this passive for like five minutes. So suddenly it's going to do 547 damage every... 0.5 seconds, so it just, you know, six times more damage, whatever, for this one passive. <clears throat> super good. And then I'm using Mjolnir with Superconductor, mostly because, uh... Mostly because Mjolnir is a five energy attack, and with Dancing Blade we really want to be throwing our energy out of Mjolnir, out of our passives as secondary as quickly as we can. So I like to start with Crystallized Flame. And we'll start from there. As you can see, we just sort of made sure that we didn't just waste five chi there. We'll do one more um, 
of our elites after this just to get it done. go. Elementalism, one of the best secondaries in the game. And we are doing right around the damage that I would want to be doing with a standard weapon, so that's really good. Uh, now we're going to be running... Now we're going to be running our blade plus the weapons. So we have shotgun. Of course we're running a raging shot, and I like point blank shot here because you'll be in melee range all the time. Shell salvage with the passive. Super good. Because it allows you to just keep on getting fire breath shell shells, which is super good. Uh, this is one of the few things where you're going to see a 5 energy consumer and swallow cut. Because shell salvage just gives us so much energy that we are otherwise wasting a bunch of damage just leaving it on the table. So, we get it started here. We're going to start off with a uh, dancing blade. And then we're going to just try to get rid of some energy. You can see that it's just a ton of energy right at the beginning that we really have to worry about. And then after that, it gets a little bit easier. And we'll do one more Dancing Blade. And again, Shotgun, one of the best secondaries in the game. And we did 40, yeah, really good damage. Solid damage for a blade. Then, alright, then we're going to switch over to, is Shotgun the first one? I think it is. Yeah, Shotgun. Then we're going to switch over to Blade Pistols. Uh, for Blade, I just... I need more discipline here. So I like Kill Blind with the passive Focus Fire because it's going to give us consistent matched pairs even when we're running it as a secondary. Um, and then I like Dual Shot. I am running Heavy Caliber rounds here to make it so that my matched chambers do more damage because I am running Sov Tech Harmonizers which will upgrade my uh, chambers once in a while. And what that's going to do is make it so that I will be using pistol a lot of times in a row. If you're not using that, the best ability that I've seen, again, really great for secondaries, is fixed game. So every four seconds, if you haven't used the pistol ability in four seconds, which you can easily do, uh, you just gain a set of match p chambers, whatever happens to be on your left. Uh, do be aware that you will have to fire one extra time past the end of the timing for match chambers for this act to activate otherwise it'll just get stuck on that chamber but it's still really good um uh, for this one though we're not worried about that so i like to start off with uh kill blind and then we go from there so we're just gonna go kill, kill blind a dancing blade hey <laughs> it's letting me push buttons that's neat and we're just throwing some pistol out there so that we don't run out, or so that we don't max out our pistol energy. Because normally we are going to want to use that with kill blind. We'll go to one more dancing blade. And we are not getting great luck on our, um... Kill blinds, which is unfortunate, but we're still doing okay. 
Alright, so we'll just stop that right there, see how we did. About 4,000 DPS. Pretty much where I want to be, honestly, with Blade. <laughs> Which is unfortunate because I want to be at about 45 to 5,000 with all the other weapon, with most all the other weapons. But there you go. And finally, we have a Blade AR. Again, AR is a bad secondary because most of its damage, because it's a setup weapon again, most of its damage comes from spamming grenades, and we cannot do that with the little bit of energy we get. Uh, of note, I am using the KSR 43 which makes it so that my grenades will immediately be cooked. Don't worry about it if you are not. Just use Burst Fire and then immediately go to Tsunami. You should have a fully cooked incendiary grenade pretty much right after that. Uh, we are running, obviously, three round or Burst Fire with Stability. We are running Incendiary Grenade with Slow Burn, and that's about all we have the ability to do. So we'll start off with Burst Fire. We got a grenade. We're going to use our Dancing Blade. Tsunami to try to make sure we don't burn a bunch of energy. And now we're sort of getting into a swing. Try not to use Burst Fire if you have 7 energy or less, because if you do manage to grab a grenade, you will sort of just lose it. You might just not be able to use it, so beware of that. This is particularly true if you're using the KSR. We'll just use our Elite and call it a parse. Alright, now I'm expecting this to be below 4, because it's just not a great secondary weapon. Yep. So, again, Rifle Blade would be a lot better. So, if you're looking for really good DPS, Rifle Blade is the way to go on that one. And that's where we are. So those are all the blade DPS things. Uh, if you're looking to see some of the other weapons, then I'll be making a video for each one of those as the primary. A lot of those, are you're going to see some bigger numbers there in those ones. Sorry, guys. Sorry, blade the users, but you're going to see a lot of bigger numbers in most of those. And I will see you there.